All right, Dr. Sissel again. We're going to talk about cholesterol today. Uh, there's a significant amount of misconception, misunderstanding, things you hear in the news about how bad cholesterol is. And if you have high cholesterol, you're in trouble. And, you know, um, how many people are on statin medication and all that stuff. We got to talk about this because it's extremely misunderstood. A um, lot of manipulation being done by the media and, and people that maybe just don't understand or this stuff. But here we go. Um, High cholesterol causes heart disease is one of the biggest sort of misconceptions that people have. If you look at um, meat-eating animals, there's very little, if ever, any um, sign of heart disease or stroke in their lifetime um, at all. Um, but look at or herbivores or vegetable or, you know, um, <coughs> carb-eating animals, if you will, grain. Uh, there's significant amounts of heart disease and stroke and cancer in their diet, I mean, in their lifetime. So... We gotta talk about like what it is and how it is. So, what happens? Um, cholesterol is a soft, waxy substance that is made by the liver 80% of the time. It travels in the blood as two compounds, as you know, low density lipoproteins or LDL, and high density lipoproteins or HDL. Um, it's needed, vital, and, and necessary for the body to make hormones like estrogen and testosterone. Um, made up for vitamin D, it's huge for core zone, um, so it's a big deal, it's made for bile, it helps make bile acid, um, cholesterol is a very, very vital nutrient that we have to have in our body um, at lots of levels, our brains, 70-80% made of cholesterol, um, cholesterol surrounds all the nerves that um, carry signals throughout your, all the nerves carry signals, but it surrounds all the 70 trillion nerves through your body. Um, high cholesterol causes heart disease is one of those things that you've got to stop thinking um, that's true because it's just not true. Um, the truth is it's the oxidation of cholesterol uh, that causes heart disease and how cholesterol oxidizes is our thing we gotta um, combat if you will. Um, the reality is more people have heart attacks with lower cholesterol than people do that have higher cholesterol. Um, there's a higher death rate of people, the higher mortality rate of people with higher cholesterol, with lower cholesterol than there is people with high cholesterol. So more people die with low cholesterol than they do die with, it, with high cholesterol. Um, statin medications, uh, they're never been shown to decrease mortality rate of heart attacks or stroke in people that take them. They definitely lower um, cholesterol, but that's because they shut off the liver's ability to produce cholesterol. Um, so you just got to understand that this is not um, the way that you've maybe been described. Let's talk about the main medication dangers of cholesterol. So statin drugs cause liver damage, um, which obviously because they shut off the ability for the cholesterol to be made by the liver, uh, that cause the liver to waste away and damage, causes neuropathy pain in your extremities type stuff, severe joint pain, ligament and tendon rupturing, causes muscle wasting disease, that does not sound fun, or, and it causes atrophy of the muscles, heart failure, the heart is a muscle, so if your muscles are going to waste, it's going to cause your heart to fail. Um, cholesterol is a powerful antioxidant that protects us against aging and cancer. Um, if you lower that it's going to reduce our anti-aging and cancer prevention effects of cholesterol um, cause depression stops production of coq10 which is a very important hormone for or vitamin for helping the heart to work correctly they um, do not allow the liver to produce cholesterol that's what medications like statin drugs do now you have to understand why does cholesterol get raised in the body and in, in itself anyways Cholesterol raises naturally in the body when the body has inflammation. So what causes inflammation? Injury, prolonged um, micro trauma to the body will cause inflammation. Um, strain and stress in the body when it's weak in certain spots. Um, how we eat, um, whether we exercise well or correctly or not. Um, stress, all that stuff causes inflammation. So when you get inflammation in your body, the body naturally, the liver will release cholesterol to go fight that. So whenever inflammation occurs, especially in the arteries, the liver has to produce more cholesterol to repair the damage in the body as well as the arteries. So think about that. Um, 
your brain is made up of 60 to 70 percent cholesterol if you lower cholesterol with drugs the brain and nerve tissues begin to deteriorate now we got dementia and depression decrease in serotonin um, all kinds of stuff go down coq10 um, will be inhibited by taking statin drugs which is biomechanical um, substance needed to transfer energy from food to cells to be used to work at staying alive and healthy coq10 helps the food get break down and transfer it to the cells to be used for energy so it really will cause depression and stuff if that's inhibited um, it reduces inflammation protects your body from cancer and aging coq10 does um, it's a primary building block for the cells of your brain and nervous system and if you've been taking a statin medication like Lipitor, it is essential to be supplementing it with CoQ10. So if you are taking a statin medication, since I'm not, you know, somebody that can tell you to get off, um, they got to consult your doctor about that, you need to be taking CoQ10 as a supplement to help out at least. Because if you don't want to listen to science and you don't want to listen to logic and you want to just continue taking your medications, then you just need to take CoQ10 to at least help with all this other stuff because if you don't you're just gonna end up having major major problems as you go cholesterol drugs increase heart attacks we found and I'll read this to you researchers followed 114 patients with heart problems who began taking cholesterol lowering drugs <coughs> they found that every point of decrease of the serum cholesterol there was a 36 percent chance of increase of death that was done in the UK, in the UK that study. Um, so, should I lower my cholesterol? Is the question. Well, every symptom is the body doing the right thing at the right time. So you just have to understand that you have a symptom, and it's a symptom's there for a reason. Maybe it's pain because pain's the last thing to sort of show up in a disease process. So if you're starting to, to experience pain, that means you've had a problem for quite a long time, wherever that pain is. Um, that if you're having high cholesterol and you're shown in your blood the reason it's there is because of inflammation in your body so my my comment to you would be to always go fix the inflammation go do whatever you need to do to lower the inflammation and then you'll see the cholesterol go down because the cholesterol is there only because you your body's inflamed and it's in a it's in need of of cholesterol so that's why it gets released so much by the liver um, let me read this to you. While many cardiologists insist that lowering cholesterol is correlated with a reduction in the risk of heart attacks, few can say that there is reduction in the risk of mortality. Um, that has been much harder to show. In other words, it has never been conclusively shown that lowering cholesterol saves lives. In fact, several large studies have shown that lowering cholesterol in the range currently recommended is correlated with an increased risk of death. That was said by Dr. Ron Rosedale, a uh, medical doctor. So, several large studies have shown that lowering cholesterol into the range currently recommended is correlated with an increased risk of death. So you lower cholesterol, you increase your risk of death because of all the things that cholesterol is doing. And when it's elevated, it's elevated for a reason. The body's doing something, whether it's repairing inflammation, building hormones, cortisone, vitamin D, all that stuff. Increased blood pressure is an indicator that there's a thickening or blocking of the arteries. Just remember, obviously we know that. So thickening in the blood is caused by platelets in the blood clumping together to heal the arteries. And blocking of the arteries occurs when the blood being thick and from placking in the arteries. There's two types of stroke, um, ischemic and hemorrhagic. The ischemic one's more common. It's when the blood flow of the brain is blocked in an artery. Blocking happens when a piece of plaque breaks down loose in the artery. And then hemorrhagic is more, obviously more deadly, it occurs from the artery when it's weakened, tears or ruptures. So inflammation is a cause of heart disease. We know that <clears throat> it's not cholesterol, it's inflammation. The reason why cholesterol gets raised is because of inflammation. So when you damage anything in the body, it starts an inflammatory process because it's the job is the body to start to heal. And so it inflames because it's bringing in the healing substances. So when damage occurs to the arteries, or elsewhere, chemicals are released to initiate the process of inflammation. Arteries constrict, blood becomes more prone to clot, white blood cells are called into the area to gobble up damaged debris, and cells adjacent to those damaged are told to multiply. So ultimately, scars form rubber inside of the artery walls, we call it plaque, and the constriction of arteries and the thickening of our blood further predispose us to high blood pressure and heart attacks. 
So if that makes sense, that it's just the inflammation that's causing the constriction, the white blood cells are coming in, causing narrowing, but it's all scar tissue, all that stuff is just the body um, going through the healing process. What causes inflammation? Sugar, bad fats. Remember, if you're eating grain-fed meat, grain-fed um, chicken, grain-fed eggs, um, farm-raised fish, all that stuff, that ratio of essential fatty acids supposedly being needing to be 4 to 1. In, in eggs, it's um, 15 to 1. In um, grain-fed meat, it's 20 to 1. So it screws it up and causes inflammation. Acidity, your diet needs to be very alkaline, uh, free radicals, as we know. So you just need to really, really work on um, what's causing inflammation, how to fix that inflammation, address that inflammation first. Don't worry about the cholesterol necessarily. Um, it's there because the body's trying to fight inflammation. So stop treating the symptom and start to get to the cause of the problem, and that's your diet. First of all, you've got to address your diet, decrease sugar, get rid of sugar altogether. Get rid of your bad fats. Use, I mean, eat your good fats, good grain. I mean, grass-fed meat, wild fish, um, free-range eggs, and chicken. That's just got to be what you do. Um, taking cholesterol medication is just going to make your body break down and die earlier. And then you need to really work on um, avoiding cholesterol issues and these myths altogether. Just get it out of your mind, or read more, or research more if you want. But the reality is you just got to change your diet that will lower inflammation and your body's going to heal naturally. Cholesterol being high, it's just your body fighting inflammation. Um, so don't stress about that stuff. Work on what's the cause of the inflammation first. Um, if you have any questions, leave me a comment. Get a hold of me anytime you would like at drwingsisleyahoo.com. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Um, talk to you soon.